Welcome back. We continue our coverage this week of Madison's mayoral race taking shape now between former school board president Gloria Reyes and incumbent Satya Rhodes Conway, who formally announced a reelection bid last Sunday. Rhodes Conway is with me today. Welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm well, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I want to start with, uh, you know, your opponent, Gloria Reyes, on the show last week. You know, public safety is you know, becoming a core part of her platform. One thing that she has talked about both on our show and in her announcement was, you know, rising crime rates according to her in Madison. So I, I think my first question to you is, would you agree of that assess, would you agree with that assessment of Madison over your tenure? Um, absolutely not. And in fact, you can look at all of the data um, that are available through the police department. Um, our crime rates are trending down. They have historically been low um, compared to the rest of the country. They continue to be low. And even in the areas that are of highest concern, um, which is the stolen cars, the shots fired, the traffic crashes, um, those are areas that the police department has specifically focused on over the summer. And we actually are seeing decreases in incidents in all of those areas. So all of our numbers are trending in the right direction. Um, I think what the police department is doing is working, um, and they've been doing that um, in, in part thanks to the investments that we've made in their ability to do data analysis. Kind of a two-part follow-up question. To what degree do you believe the, ma the mayoral office should be involved, directly involved in violence prevention? And secondly, related to that, um, we talked about school resource office officers last week on the show with Gloria. She wants to push to remove them. I mean, to what degree do you think the, the mayor should be involved in that? Well, so on the first, I think it's absolutely important for the mayor's office to be involved in violence prevention. And over the course of my term, um, we have expanded our violence prevention unit in public health pretty dramatically and moved them to the forefront of our work in public safety. And they are now working hand in hand with MPD um, to make sure that we are identifying where are the problems? Uh, where are the hot spots? Um, where are the trends that we're concerned about in terms of crime in our community? And how are we working not just through MPD to address it in the immediate moment, but also working upstream so that we can prevent that violence from happening in our community at all. And so I actually think violence prevention is probably one of the most important things that an administration can do, and it's something that we've been investing heavily in. On the question of school resource officers, um, that's a decision for the school district administration and for the school board. Um, it's a decision that they have made, um, and I don't feel like it is appropriate for the mayor um, to come back and tell another unit of government what to do. Um, what I do think is appropriate and what we have been doing is working very closely with the school district administration to support their safety planning and to support that they are working, the work that they are doing in the schools um, to create a safe environment. And a brief to myself, uh, when I asked you the question, I believe I said Gloria Reyes pushing to remove them, complete opposite, Gloria Reyes in our show pushing to bring them back. So just correcting myself yeah. real quick there. Um, what would you want to be the defining projects of a second term if reelected? Well, you know, when I was elected the first time, the things that I promised that I would work on and that we have worked on were housing, transit, climate resilience, and racial equity. And I think that we have delivered on all of those fronts. And we need to keep working on all of them. And that work is not done yet, and it's part of why I'm running for a second term. And, but the, the things that we need to, I think, really focus on going forward is continuing our recovery out of the pandemic. We need to make sure that our economy continues to be strong, that we're supporting our small businesses, that working families don't get left behind as we recover from the pandemic. Um, so that's a big piece of work. Um, housing continues to be probably the number one challenge for our community, and we need to keep doing more there. Um, so that's going to be a major push in my second term. Um, and then obviously continuing to work on public safety, violence prevention, very important. That's multifaceted. We need to be offering opportunities for our youth um, and the climate continues to be a major issue. You mentioned housing, you know, that's obviously been a big push for your first mm -hmm. term. I know that will continue into your second. Um, specifically thinking about homelessness and the Dairy Drive encampment, do you think Dairy Drive has really fulfilled its mission or, it, it, or do you see any challenges or problems with how that's playing out? 
Well, I, actually, I think Dairy Drive has been very successful. Um, you know, anytime you are working with a population that's experiencing homelessness, um, that's a challenging prospect, and uh, folks require a lot of individualized support. Uh, but I think overall, Dairy Drive has been quite successful. We have a number of people who have lived there uh, temporarily and have been able to stabilize their lives and move on into a better housing situation and uh, so I think it's been a great resource for our community and um, I would like to find a way to continue uh, to provide that resource and um, but it's obviously only one facet of how we address homelessness in our community and we are very focused on completing the construction of the purpose-built men's shelter and supporting the Salvation Army in the completion of the construction of a purpose-built women and families shelter. And it's hard to talk about homelessness without also talking about affordable housing which is always an issue in Madison. You've done a number of things for example make, you know pushing to make so-called granny flat um, more accessible in Madison, some other zoning changes. Um, give me something specific that you'd like to accomplish for affordable housing in your second term? Well, we're going to have to continue to do some of the things that we're doing, right? We're going to have to continue to push on the tax credit housing and the creation of affordable housing that way. Uh, I would also like to really double down on our Housing Forward Fund, which is a place where folks who have innovative ideas about creating affordable housing can come and get funded. Um, so that's an important piece. Uh, but in terms of a new work, we really need to go back to the zoning code and look at are there other places where our zoning is um, preventing the construction of housing and affordable housing in our community? Are there ways that our process is preventing that or making it harder or more expensive? We need to, to do another pass through there and see if there are additional things that we can do to make it easier to build housing. Um, and then I think we really need to look at why is it so difficult to build affordable ownership opportunities in our community. Why is it difficult to build, um, you know, whether that's townhouses or two flats or um, condos for ownership? Because we need to be moving, the folks that are ready to move into ownership need to have an opportunity to do that in a way that's affordable. And so that um, housing product I think is missing from our market right now and I'd like to work on that. Absolutely. I know there's a lot of other issues we could discuss. Our timing is limited today, but I know that uh, this is a race we'll continue to cover closely. And thanks so much for coming on and sharing your perspective. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Up next, a request to bring a cult of a Islamic cult of prayer to one small Wisconsin town prompted outrage and then silence.